I really want to take this time to challenge you tonight as we move forward to come back into alignment with the kingdom of God. I tell you what, Doug has always been there for me. He has, uh, before my DS, before a pastor, he has always been a friend of mine. Doug has always, he's always been right there beside me, encouraging me, um, uplifting me. Dr. Van Ness, to me, personally, is um, a trusted friend, a respected leader. And he's always been there if I ever needed anything, uh, needed to, to talk to someone. Personally, Doug is just a great friend. He, he's one of those guys that's very um, just genuine, authentic, has a great sense of humor. Come across a lot of district superintendents, and what I've always loved about Doug is he really has this unique ability to bridge generations. Doug Van Nest is awesome, and he is a great DS. For a pastor to be able to make, you know, to give a shout out to their district superintendent in that way is a pretty cool thing. He's a good guy. He's known many for God, God used in life, uh, Dr. Van Nest, for talking with many people. Many people love this guy. Uh, Doug's far more than just a boss or even the leader. I respect Doug. I respect his walk with Jesus. When, when I had uh, times that I thought I couldn't go on or get discouraged, he would never allow me to, to quit. He always brings it back to we are here for people and we are here to tell the greatest story ever given and that is the story of hope and forgiveness and redemption. Our call has always been and continues to be one of touching our world with the love and the grace of Jesus. And we must continue to move beyond the walls of our churches and out into our communities with open hearts and open arms to all those that Jesus loves, no matter where they are and no matter who they are and no matter what they have done. Dr. Van Ness, um, leadership and his life has modeled one that has called us as a district to constantly be asking the question, in what ways are we advancing the kingdom and in what ways are we advancing ourselves? We, we can't underestimate that gift that uh, God has given us through Doug and through Doug's leadership um, to give us the ability to dream and be creative and not be afraid to fail. I feel like he was always sort of a champion of that approach to ministry of being creative, realizing that we weren't going to be able to do all the same things over and over and expect to get any different results than we're getting. And he has been so courageous to remind us that at the end of the day, what really matters is the expansion of the kingdom of God. And I think all those things um, have come out of Doug's heart to really allow pastors to not be hindered by a, a system that we put in place, but to let the system really encourage the mission and creativity of God right in our local churches. We have seen an incredible response to that. 14 churches uh, preparing to start new churches and another 18 that um, we are working on for the next year. You know, I am so glad and, and I celebrate the advances that we have made as a district family over these recent years and in, in breaking down the walls and reaching out to the many cultures that are represented in our communities. And we have to continue to tear down those walls. I've told you before and I will continue to tell you if we're excited about reaching other cultures when they live in another nation, we should be just as excited and just as passionate about reaching them when they live down the street from us. Amen. Amen. I think he has been open to allowing a diversity of people to create churches or to be a part of churches and uh, being able to expand our definition in some ways of what it what a Nazarene, a typical Nazarene looks like. I think that Doug is is very open to new expressions of the church and in, being innovative and, and trying new things. Dr. Van Ness does have a great vision for alternative styles of church or different ways to express church. And I've been thankful that he has been open that to allow congregations to do different things that may not be seen as traditional ministries, but have a great impact for the kingdom of God. So every once in a while we need to step aside and um, take our own opinions, if you will, our own self wants and set those aside for, for the betterment of God's story because it's not about us, it's about the story. I don't think that he's afraid of failure. 
that that if you're you're trying something new, uh, I think that that he uh, encourages that. The church had a vision that we would start a Hispanic church and have a Hispanic ministry. And Dr. Van Ness supported the church and our search for a pastor for that local congregation and has continued to encourage us uh, to support that ministry and think of other ways that we can build the kingdom of God. I think he's glad that we're doing something and we're trying to be effective and to reach new people. So when we went in and we renovated stuff, it's it's a little more rustic looking. It's it's laid back. Um, the way that you know that that we preach, the way that we sing, the way that we dress. It's and Doug always pushed us and pushed me to do whatever you can to get the story to as many people as you can. Um, and we've seen that. I mean, we, we've seen guys walk into church that hasn't been in a church for years, and he he just said, "Buddy, go." God's put something on your heart, go. Who am I to hold you back? In the years ahead, the church may look different in some ways, but the call will always remain the same and the reality of His grace will always be at the heart of who we are. I think it's been a real transformation in the decade that I've been here in, again, the opportunities for a variety of expressions of, of church to occur. I ended up being a, a barista at Starbucks and at the same time trying to figure out God was leading. And I really felt this strong calling to do something that was outside sort of the traditional walls of the church. And, and Dr. Van Ness was really instrumental in helping me to create and, and sort of launch my position, my ministry at the University of Cincinnati. You know, I often talk about the, the bartender effect thing. When I'm behind the bar and I'm making a drink and pulling a shot of espresso, steaming milk, putting their syrup in, asking them how their day was. It was just surprising to me how much they would just open up and share things. And I found that within months, I had developed more friendships and relationships with people outside the church than I had in my six years of being on staff at this church in this community. And so it just opened my eyes to how much more you could connect with people in your community and just really rub shoulders with like everyday <laughs> ordinary folks. Uh, when, when I first got into this gig and this, this ministry, Doug said, hey, what would your church look like? And I went through this whole deal of what my church would look like, everything from the signs to the, the parking lot and the stage and the chairs. and. Um, he said, well, that's nice. And then uh, about two years ago, he asked me that same question. He said, what would your church look like? I said, Doug, I, I said, I don't care if we're sitting on beanbags. I just wanted to be a church where uh, when people come in, uh, they're welcomed. And, and the common goal is God, that we all come together from different towns, different backgrounds. Uh, our W-2s look different, but we're all there uh, celebrating God. And he, and he finally said, you got it. You figured it out. You see, there is one area in which the wall is still much higher than it should be. And that is the area of women in ministry. We have always ordained women. We believe that God equips and God calls women to ministry. And yes, they can serve in any capacity in the church. But we've allowed ourselves to be shaped by culture, by other traditions, and the result has been this unspoken resistance to the idea of women as pastors. If we're not allowing women to be in positions of leadership, then we're not being who we say we are. And I think Doug gets that. His support for me or for women in ministry or to find those places where people are open to women being in ministry so that it then sets the example for generations from now, being able to place women in ministry is incredibly important, incredibly critical to continuing to be who we say we are. What's the funniest thing, Doug? I didn't, I don't know. I don't even know if he's, he's, he's never said anything funny. Some of you need to get on Facebook. <laughs> He's tried to be funny. We're looking forward to a great ordination service tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. 
we have 11 ordinance. Nine of them we actually feel good about. Um, I think he even thinks he's funny. He honestly thinks I'm drunk. And I'm thinking, I, and I just envisioned this hitting the papers, you know, suspicion of DUI, and I thought, that's not going to be good for the church or for me. And he said, well, where's your office? And I told him, and he said, well, what do you do? And I, I told him I was a minister with the Baptist church. I just want you to quit counting so many calories. I mean, everything doesn't have to be about calories and carbs. I mean, just, just eat a Big Mac every once in a while. I mean, it, I think he would be happier. I think he would enjoy people better if he, if he would eat a Big Mac and some fries. I usually laugh at his jokes because he buys me lunch. He tries. As Dr. Van Ness transitions to his new position, I hope that he sees in the years ahead the seeds that he has planted on this district, that he will be encouraged by what he sees happen on Southwest Ohio, and also that we want to encourage him and know that he's going to plant a lot of seeds in the students at Mount Vernon Nazarene University, that generations of Nazarenes will be impacted by Dr. Van Ness's service. I am very excited for them and my prayer for them is that this would be a time of great renewal and refreshment as a family and that Dr. Van Est would have that sense, that renewed sense of confidence from the Lord that says he is called for such a time as this. I think knowing him as a friend and a DS and a brother in Christ and knowing everything that he's had to deal with over the last few years, I would just pray for rest. As you take your new position at Mount Vernon, I wish for you the ability and capacity to transmit what you know and, and who you are to the next generation of ministers and leaders that you're gonna form and train. And I really wish him well in terms of his ability to keep thinking deeply and to help students at the university level really connect the, what they think about God, what they think about scripture to the way that they live their lives. The invitation has been given to be a part of God's mission. The only question is whether or not you'll get in line with it and be a part of it. And so I ask you tonight in all love and all respect, are you willing to refocus? Align your goals with the mission of making disciples. Will you reimagine and Align your methods with what the Spirit is doing. And will you re-engage? Align your heart with the needs of your communities. And allow God to work through you to make a difference.